Okay, again, um, this is a brand new piece of equipment I'm trying to use right now. You may hear some weird electronic noise. If you hear that, um, at the end, I'm going to ask you if there was any because hopefully there isn't. Hopefully they fix the issue. They emailed me back. So is the homework 103 questions that were first typed in for me were problems three and four. So here is problem number three. It says both Ra Raquel and Felipe attempt to make a scale drawing of the original parallelogram shown. Did either Raquel or Felipe successfully draw the parallelogram to scale? The way you can tell if something is drawn to scale is that you are going to have the same um, ratio for each set of sides. So what I mean here is if I talk about the height of the parallelogram and I talk about the width of the parallelogram and I count the number of squares that I use and I write two fractions, two proportions, I'm going to get the same number. So let's see if what we do here. So my width of this parallel, oops, that's not the width of the parallelogram. The width is going from here to here. So let's count squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then my height of the parallelogram is one, two, three, four, five. What I want to do is count the width and the height in the other two drawings, and then I'm going to set up fractions and see if the two fractions simplify to give me the same thing. So for Raquel, one, two, three, four, five, six. Width is six. The height, one, two, three, four, five. I will tell you right now, if both heights are the same, if Raquel's drawing was going to be a scale drawing, the widths would have to be the same. I can tell you right now, without doing any math, that that one, Raquel's drawing, let's make that nice and thick pin, Raquel's drawing is not a scale drawing. Now let's work on Felipe's. I'm going to count the width and the height. One, two, I don't need a thick pen. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The width is ten. The height is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now notice I don't have anything that matches. So what I want to do is I want to do fractions. And there are a couple ways that I can set up these fractions. I can do my height over width for my, what I'm doing is calling the red one, and compare it to my height over width of the green one. Or I can set up my height of the red one over the height of the green one and compare that one to the width of the red one to the width of the green one. And what I'm checking when I do these comparisons is I need to ask myself, when I do these comparisons, do I get equal numbers in either one of these two sets of fractions? So for this left-hand group, the height is 5, the width is 8. So I'm asking myself, does 5 eighths equal height is 6 and width is 10? Does that equal 6 tenths? And I will tell you right now that they don't equal each other. If you do not, if you can't look at those two fractions and tell me they don't equal each other, one way you can think about it is um, eighths are half of a quarter. A quarter is 25 or 0.25. Half of 0.25 is 0.125. So I've got 0.125 for one of my eighths. Four of my eighths makes one half which is 0.5, you add those together, you get 0.625, or use Desmos as your calculator. This other side, I get 
six tenths I can write as 0.6, so they don't match. If you did it this left-hand way, you do not need to do it the right-hand way because you already know they do not match. But if you, you can do it the right-hand way also. So I wanted to check red H, which is five, over green H, which is six. And I want to compare that to um, red W, which is eight, over the green W, which is 10. And I need to see if these are equal to each other. Well, I know the eight tenths is 0.8. And five sixths, um, this is one of those. I know that one third is 0.33, repeating. That means one sixth is half of one third. So that would be 0.167 ish. Um, so four sixths is two thirds. So I'm going to add two sixths to that. And I get a wonderful, I get 0.833 repeating. That's what I get for five six. Again, you can put those into a calculator. I don't have a calculator in my hand. I guess I could have grabbed one. They do not match. So Felipe's drawing is not a scale drawing. So walking through that, do you have any questions on how I was able to tell if either of the drawings were to scale? If you have a question, please type it in the chat. The big thing is if things are scale drawings of each other, the corresponding parts are going to be proportional. And those are going to be key words that you are going to hear over and over again in eighth grade math and when you take high school geometry about corresponding parts being proportional. So let me do problem number four. Okay, number four. It says on a scale drawing of a table, the length is 12 units and the width is eight units. Each unit represents 15 centimeters. So this is 12 units across. Each one of my units is 15 centimeters. I'm, I'm sorry, that's hard to read. Let me uh, erase that really quick. And I'm gonna write, I'm gonna circle the 15 centimeters and each length, each part of a square is 15 centimeters. Xavier says that if he draws another scale drawing of the table with a scale of 20 centimeters for each unit, it will be larger than the original drawing because 20 is greater than 15. Okay, so let's do some quick math. And this time I am going to do a calculator. Okay, if I get one that actually has batteries in it. So if I'm 12 units by 8 units, and each unit is 15, I'm going to use a multiplication problem to figure out how big my thing actually is to start with. So my original drawing is going to be 12 times 15 and 8 times 15. And that is going to give me 180 times 120 by 120. That's how big the original, the real thing is. It's 180 centimeters by 120 centimeters. Well, if I redraw it where each square is 20, what I need to do is I need to figure out how many squares I need to make my new drawing. So if I know my new scale is going to be 20 centimeters for each square, I divide each of these numbers by 20, and that will tell me how big my new drawing is going to be. So if I do 180 divided by 20, I get 9. And if I do 120 divided by 20, I get 6. And they want us to draw the new figure. Well, I want to draw one that's 9 units across. Make the pen a little bit wider. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 by six units tall, three, four, five, six. So 
So that is the new scale. The new scale is the one right here that they wrote that says the original scale is eight units and each unit is 15 centimeters. The new scale is each unit is 20 centimeters. That's the new scale. So what I have drawn on here would be the work. Oh, so is Xavier, why is Xavier incorrect? The reason he's incorrect is if a square is gonna take more, if you're, when you're drawing, and a square is gonna take up, um, be representing a bigger number, you can draw it smaller, okay? So if a square, basically one of our units, Um, equals a bigger number. That means our drawing is going to be smaller. And you can see that with the drawing that I made. So if you look at the picture, um, the new scale is I mean, I'll make it nice and green and circle. This is my new scale, circled in green. My old scale, I'm circling it in blue. Those are the two scales, new scale and old scale. That should address the questions on that problem. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another page in here before we get to today's actual lecture. And I'm gonna go back and um, look through chat really quick. I'm going to grab a couple of the homework 102 problems. I've got it floating around somewhere here. Homework 104. So I'm going to grab a couple homework 102 problems and work through those and then I'm going to go through the lecture part, okay? So if I go to my new one here and I go back to homework 102, um, there it is. I already did one. I'm going to do four and five for homework 102. Um, control function, print screen, paint, crop. And the thought process for a lot of these is very, very similar or identical. Um, control A, control C. Um, yeah, if you still have more questions, I do have office hours. I only had two people show up to my two hours of office hours on Monday, and I had no middle schoolers show up at all to any of my office hours Monday or Tuesday. So here's number four. So I do have office hours throughout the week. Some of them are after school. Some of them are during school. So if I go to number four, Yep, we've got it. So, thank you, Benita, for that. On homework 102, problem number four. A scale drawing of a house shows a closet with floor dimensions of 4.4 4 centimeters by 3.2. So what it has is a closet that is 4.4 centimeters by 3.2 centimeters. The scale drawing, the actual closet is two centimeters means one meter. Two centimeters in my drawing is equal to one meter actual. So what I want to do is I want to find my actual area. And in order for me to find my actual area, the easiest thing for me to do is to find my actual um, 
dimensions, my actual length and width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my width. 3.2 centimeters is going to be a certain number of meters. And 4.4 centimeters is going to be a certain number of meters. If either of the numbers in my original information is a one, the work is fairly straightforward, okay? I'm either gonna multiply by a number to go from left to right, or I'm gonna divide by a number to go from left to right. If the one is on the right, I'm gonna divide. I need to divide two by two to get to the one. So to go from left to right, I am dividing by two. So that means if this two centimeters is divided by two to turn it into meters, I need to divide each one of these dimensions by two, and that will give me my new dimension. So if I take 3.2 centimeters divided by two, I get 1.6. If I take 4.4 .4 divided by two, I get 2.2. And that gives me my new dimensions. That is not the answer to this question. The answer to this question is what is the area? So area is length times width. So I'm gonna multiply these two numbers together. Six times two is 12, carry the one. Two times one is two plus one is three. Bring that down, a two and a three, and I get three by two, but I have two decimal points, I've got one here, one here, and it's one unit, two units, so I need to have two units of decimal in my final answer. And then I have meters times meters, which is meters squared, or square meters. And again, I do not need you to do the arithmetic by hand, you can use a calculator, and again, my best recommendation is that you use Desmos as your calculator, because that's what you're gonna be using when you take um, the, the Smarter Balance test later this year. Okay, and then I'm going to quickly, I'm gonna to try to quickly add another example problem, and then we'll do today's lecture. Um, homework 102. Control Z, Control Z, crop. Prop, prop, done, control A, control C. Um, where is my jam? Go to the new one, hit control B. Make it bigger so you guys can read it. And back to the board. Oh, before I go to the next problem, did my reasoning help people with problem number four? Can you guys see how I went step by step to get through problem number four? Or are people still stuck on this one? Okay. I am going to go to problem number five from homework 102. And for problem number five, it says that Francesca is making a scale drawing of a mural on a wall in her school's hallway. The mural is 12 feet high by 135 feet long. I like to draw pictures, okay, just so that I can have an idea of what's going on here. So I have 100, erase please. I have 135 feet long by 12 feet high. She is using a scale of three centimeters for every four feet, okay? So what I wanna know is what are the dimensions of the drawing? So what I know from the given information is three centimeters goes to four feet. I'm gonna put the arrow the other direction. Reason why I'm putting the arrow the other direction is four feet to three centimeters is because I have feet to start with. Okay, I want to turn 12 feet two centimeters 
and I want to turn 135 feet to centimeters. Okay, and the reason why I draw it this way and don't necessarily set up equations right now that we're going to see a little bit later is it helps me think through my reasoning process. I told you that um, if you're going from one number to another number and you're going smaller, you end up dividing by the number that you're going away from. For example, if I want to go from two to one, I'm going smaller. This is smaller. So I ended up dividing by the two. Okay. Well, if I'm going from a number to a bigger number, for example, a four, I would end up, in this case, multiplying by four. Here, I don't have any ones whatsoever. There are no ones in my original work. There are no ones in my original work. But I can do the same thing. I can divide by the number that I'm starting from and multiply by the number that I'm going to. We want to divide by our starting number, and we want to multiply by where we're going. Okay, I want to divide by my starting number, and I want to multiply by where I am going. And that gives me a fraction, okay? In this example, the fraction that I want to multiply the 12 by and the 135 by is the going is the 3. The starting is the 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both of my original dimensions by 3 quarters. And right now, I am not worried about you doing the arithmetic in your head. This is a point where I'd ask you to stick it into a calculator, okay? So I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to go 12 times 3 divided by 4, and I get 9. And I'm going to do 135 times 3 divided by 4, and I get 101.25. Okay, I want you using a calculator once you get to this step that you have to multiply or divide. If it's not something you can do in your head, use a calculator right now. I do not want you wasting your time, calculator. I don't want you, I won't say wasting, I don't want you spending a large amount of time doing the arithmetic when the thing we are learning is what arithmetic do I have to do to get my answer I, the hard part, the long part, should be the setup right here and not doing the actual math. Okay. So I have done two problems from the last two homework assignments. So I've done a third of the homework questions right here on the board. Um, again, homework questions are those things that I can, you can come to um, office hours for assistance, and because very few people are showing up, a lot of those office hours are one-on-one, -on -one. okay? And when I get done with office hour, if I help you in office hours, I send you the picture of the work that I did, so if you weren't able to copy it all down correctly, you're also going to get a picture of it, okay? So we're going to start today with new stuff, and it's, it's maybe new stuff, but it's Stuff you've already done before, you may not have seen this new ter this terminology. A unit rate is what we're going to talk about today. And in order for me to define a unit rate, the first thing I have to define is what is a rate? Okay. And for us, a rate is a comparison of two numerical values. Okay, another name for this rate that we are going to be using is a ratio. 
And a ratio is also a comparison of two numerical values. Things that we use for as rates, it's we're gonna have words that's gonna end up with something per something, okay? All of our rates are gonna be something per something, okay? For example, miles per gallon. And when you see the word per, I want you to think of a fraction bar, okay? So the way I would like you guys to write miles per gallon is as miles over gallons. So that's a rate. A rate just a comparison of two, two numbers. If I go 400 miles in 10 gallons of gas, it's 400 miles per 10 gallons of gas. Now, where it becomes a unit rate, so I'm gonna write 400 miles per 10 gallons, where it becomes a unit rate is when the denominator is one. And the denominator is the bottom of the fraction. So how do I make the denominator of the fraction one? I just do the division. 40 divided by 10 is four. So my answer would be four miles per gallon as a unit rate. 40 miles for 10 gallons of gas is the same thing as four miles for one gallon of gas. Okay, we can use unit rates to help me solve various problems. For example, our wonderful, oh. Okay, I need more than what do you mean? What do I mean about what? About four mile or four miles per one gallon or something like that, remember? And I'm gonna be a little upset here because for some reason, some of my pictures did not copy over. I am going to share a document with you in Google Classroom right now. And that document's gonna say example problems. It's going to be a material post. I'm going to share it right now. Example problems for unit rates. I'm going to be adding two documents to you, and I'm going to tell you which one I want you to open to bounce back and forth with. So the um, this is week three for class work. We're going to hit post. I would like everybody to go to Google Classroom. I'm going to share my screen really quick, my other screen. Um, for some reason, my pictures are not showing up there. So I'm going to um, present my screen. And if you open your Google Classroom, it says seventh grade math. I just created a material item under week three that says example problems for unit rates. You click on that, there are two PDF files. I'm gonna be doing examples out of these two PDF files. The first PDF file that I'm gonna use is the one titled Using Unit Rates with Fractions. Okay, this is the one that I'm going to be using, okay? So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. What I'd like you to do is open the this file up in another tab and I'm going to for some reason, the pictures that I try to import, they do show up on my regular computer screen, but they are not showing up on the Jamboard. Okay? So, everybody open that up. Uh, when I actually print the document, the pictures will show up. So, I need you to understand what the, the wording of the thing is. So, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to reshare my Jamboard. 
So that's another thing that I have to do. Um, I'm unsharing my jam. Oh, it just unshared. Okay, I'm going to tap to draw again. Present. And hopefully, I want to go to, I'm going to go to slide seven. There's, you guys should, you guys are seeing a gray bar right now. That gray bar was actually problem number one on that worksheet that I'm going to read out loud. A cookie recipe calls for three and a half cups of sugar. For every three and um, three six cups of flour. And it says, if you need to make a batch of cookies using five cups of flour, how many cups of sugar will you need? So when I'm looking at this, I want to figure out how many cups of sugar per cup of flour. I want to find the rate of cups of sugar per cup of flour. And this one is an easy one. The reason why this one is an easy one is I gave you a fraction that is not simplified here. Three sixths, if I simplify that fraction, is one half. So what my problem is reading is three and a half cups of sugar, I need three and a half cups of flour. Actually, I want this the other way around. I want another, if I have five cups of flour, how many cups of sugar am I gonna have? Well, what's your ratio? What's the ratio here, okay? If I want to know number of cups of sugar per cup of flour, I would make a fraction. I get three and a half over three and a half. And one thing you're going to hear me repeat in seventh grade math, eighth grade math, and every single math class you take in high school is any number divided by itself is one. So I need one cup of sugar per cup of flour. Again, I could have looked at this and wrote down the answer. How many cups of flour do I have? I have five of them. So my cups of flours cancel and I end up with five cups of sugar. And again, that was a trivial example because both both of the things I was dealing with were this same number, but there are times I do have a one-to-one -one ratio when I'm making things. Number two should be a little more fun. It says a bag contains two and three six ounces of peanuts can make three quarters of a jar of peanut butter. So two, and three sixths, one half ounces of peanuts. I think it was ounces of peanuts. Let me check. Yep, can make three quarters of a jar of peanut butter. Um, how many ounces of peanuts to make one jar? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the um, way I would do it. Okay. So I want to know uh, I want to know ounces per jar. Okay. And I want to make one jar, so I'm going to make a unit rate. Okay. So in order to do that, I divide my two and a half by my three quarters. 
And this is what I would expect you guys to type into the calculator it would be the 2.5 divided by the 0.75. I'm going to show you how I would do it. First thing I would do is I would turn this fraction into a um, non non simplified fraction, a non mixed number. And you should remember from um, fourth through sixth grade, the way you do that is you take the denominator times the whole part, and then you add it to the numerator. So two times two is four plus one is five. So I end up with five halves. And then the bottom of my fraction is three quarters. Remember a fraction bar is just division. And the way you divide fractions is to take the bottom one or the second one and flip it over and then multiply the fractions. Five halves, take the bottom one, flip it over, then multiply your fractions. And the way you multiply fractions is you multiply the tops, and you multiply the bottoms. Five times four is 20. Two times three is six. Two goes into both of those, which gives me 10 thirds. And as far as I'm concerned, you can say it's gonna take 10 thirds of an ounce. But when you type this into a calculator, you would have got 3.3 repeating ounces of peanuts to make one jar of peanut butter. So the big thing we're doing is when we're finding unit rates is we're taking one value and dividing it by another value. The hard part on these problems is figuring out which one goes on top. Okay, and if you use the words with them, it will help you out. Let me go to, back to chat really quick. Okay, um, I am going to go to the other one. These had basic fractions that weren't too bad. I am going to go to the other worksheet. It's the one that was titled Unit Rates Classwork. And I am going to do problems one and two. Problem one says Ethan writes one sixth of a page. in one twelfth of a minute. How much time does it take him to write a full page? Okay, so I need to know how many pages per minute, okay? And then I'll flip that over. So I want to know how long to write a full page. So I need to find out minutes per page. So minutes go on top, per page go on the bottom. So I have to look at it, figure out what I want. Then I write my problem. I'm going to write the 1 12th over 1 6th. You may put these into calculators or you can do the work longhand. Division of fractions is you write the top fraction the way it was written, you flip the bottom fraction over, you multiply the tops, six times one is six, you multiply the bottoms, you get 12, six goes into both of those, six goes into six once, six goes into 12 twice, and you get one half. If you were to have put this into a calculator, here's what you would have needed to type. Open parentheses, one, divided by 12, close parentheses, divided by, open parentheses, one, divided by six, close parentheses, and then enter, or the equal. If you did not put it into the calculator correctly, you may get a wrong answer, okay? That's why I recommend that if it's very simple fractions that you're dealing with, try to do at least do the setup of the fraction work. If you need to do a calculator for the multiplication and then put it into a calculator for the simplification, do that. Sometimes when you're putting fractions, divi division of fractions into a calculator, you can end up with a mess, okay? So I want you to be aware that if you are doing this, I told you before that you need parentheses, there are invisible parentheses around the top and bottom of fractions. 
And the last example I'm going to do is number two. William fills one third of a bottle of water in one sixth of a minute. How much time will it take him to fill the bottle? So I want minutes for one bottle. So the minutes go on top. My bottles go on the bottom. And I'm going to set it up as fraction multiplication. I'm going to take the top one, write it down. The bottom one I flip over. I multiply the tops. I multiply the bottoms. I simplify my fraction. And I write my units. So it would take him half a minute or 30 seconds in order to fill the whole bottle. Okay, I'm sorry the pictures did not show up on the board, the jam board that you're seeing displayed right now. Um, I'm seeing them in my actual jam board itself. But um, I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to. Switch to me.